Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. The Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda is a high fantasy action adventure video game series created by Japanese game designers Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka. It is primarily developed and published by Nintendo, although some portable installments have been outsourced to Capcom, Vanpool, and Grezzo. The series' gameplay incorporates elements of action, adventure, and puzzle-solving games. The series centers on Link, the playable character, and chief protagonist. Link is often given the task of rescuing Princess Zelda and the Kingdom of Hyrule from Ganon, who is the principal antagonist of the series. However, other settings and antagonists have appeared in several titles. The game's plots commonly involve a relic known as the Triforce, a set of three omnipotent golden triangles. The protagonist in each game is usually not the same incarnation of Link, but a few exceptions exist. Since the original The Legend of Zelda was released in 1986, the series has expanded to include 19 entries on all of Nintendo's major game consoles, as well as a number of spin-offs. An American animated TV series based on the games aired in 1989, and individual manga adaptations commissioned by Nintendo have been produced in Japan since 1997. The Legend of Zelda is one of Nintendo's most prominent and successful franchises, selling over 75 million copies as of 2016. Gameplay The Legend of Zelda games feature a mixture of puzzles, action, adventure, battle gameplay, and exploration. These elements have remained constant throughout the series, but with refinements and additions featured in each new game. Later games in the series also include stealth gameplay, where the player must avoid enemies while proceeding through a level, as well as racing elements. Although the games can be beaten with a minimal amount of exploration and side quests, the player is frequently rewarded with helpful items or increased abilities for solving puzzles or exploring hidden areas. Some items are consistent and appear many times throughout the series, while others are unique to a single game. Though the games contain many role-playing elements, they emphasize straightforward hack and slash style combat over the strategic, turn-based, or active time combat of games like Final Fantasy. The game's role-playing elements, however, have led to much debate over whether or not the Zelda games should be classified as action role-playing games, a genre on which the series has had a strong influence. Every game in the main Zelda series has consisted of three principal areas, an overworld in which movement is multi-directional, allowing the player some degree of freedom of action, areas of interaction with other characters in which the player gains special items or advice, and dungeons, areas of labyrinthine layout, usually underground, comprising a wide range of difficult enemies, bosses, and items. Each dungeon usually has one major item inside, which is usually essential for solving many of the puzzles within that dungeon, and often plays a crucial role in defeating that dungeon's boss, as well as progressing through the game. In nearly every Zelda game, navigating a dungeon is aided by locating a map, which reveals its layout, and a magic compass, which reveals the location of significant and smaller items such as keys and equipment. In later games, the series includes a special, big key, that would unlock the door to battle the dungeon's boss enemy and open the item chest. In most Zelda games, the player's life meter is represented as a line of hearts. The life meter is replenished a number of different ways, including picking up hearts left by some defeated enemies, fairies or springs located in specific locations, or using an item such as a potion. Most games feature heart containers as the prize 
for defeating the final boss of a dungeon and pieces of heart for completing certain side quests or found in hidden chests. Heart containers extend the life meter by one heart and receiving a varied number of pieces of heart are the same as a heart container. Both will completely replenish Link's health. The games pioneered a number of features that were to become industry standards. The original Legend of Zelda was the first console game with a save function that enabled players to stop playing and then resume later. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time introduced a targeting system that simplified 3D combat. Audio The series' original composer and current sound director. In 2007 games in the Legend of Zelda series frequently feature in-game musical instruments, particularly in musical puzzles, which are widespread. Often, instruments trigger game events. For example, the recorder in The Legend of Zelda can reveal secret areas, as well as warp link to the dungeon entrances. This warping with music feature has also been used in A Link to the Past and Link's Awakening. In Ocarina of Time, playing instruments is a core part of the game, the player needing to play the instrument through the use of the game controller to succeed. Ocarina of Time is one of the first contemporary non-dance titles to feature music making as part of its gameplay, using music as a heuristic device, and requiring the player to utilize songs to progress in the game, pet game mechanic that is also present in Majora's Mask. The Legend of Zelda theme is a recurring piece of music that was created for the first game of the franchise. The composer and sound director of the series, Koji Kondo, initially planned to use Morris Revel's Bolero as the game's title theme, but was forced to change it when he learned, late in the game's development cycle, that the copyright for the orchestral piece had not yet expired. As a result, Kondo wrote a new arrangement of the overworld theme within one day. The Zelda theme has top screw attacks, top 10 video game themes ever, list. Up until Breath of the Wild, the Legend of Zelda series avoided using voice acting in speaking roles, relying instead on written dialogue. Series producer A.G.A. Onuma previously stated that as Link is entirely mute, Having the other characters speak while Link remains silent, would be off-putting. Also in Breath of the Wild, there will be a different approach to music in that there will be no theme music for different locations. Instead, the main sounds will be natural ambience around the player, in addition to some minimalist piano music. Inspiration the Legend of Zelda was principally inspired by Shigeru Miyamoto's explorations as a young boy in the hillsides, forests, and caves surrounding his childhood home in Sonobi, Japan where he ventured into forests with secluded lakes, caves, and rural villages. According to Miyamoto, one of his most memorable experiences was the discovery of a cave entrance in the middle of the woods. After some hesitation, he apprehensively entered the cave and explored its depths with the aid of a lantern. Miyamoto has referred to the creation of the Zelda games as an attempt to bring to life a miniature garden and for players to play within each game of the series. Hearing of American novelist F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife Zelda, Miyamoto thought the name sounded pleasant and significant. Paying tribute, he chose to name the princess after her, and titled it The Legend of Zelda. Link and the fairy were inspired by Peter Pan and Tinker Bell. The Master Sword was inspired by the Arthurian legend, first mentioned in Welsh mythology, Mabinogi and as Caledful, Excalibur. The similarities lay with the swords being kept in stone until the chosen one, hero, takes it out to save the land. 
setting on the Alton overhead view of a young boy in a green tunic battling creatures the legend of Zelda takes place predominantly in a medieval Western Europe-inspired fantasy land called Hyrule, which has developed a deep history and wide geography over the series' many releases. Much of the backstory of the creation of Hyrule was revealed in the games A Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, The Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, and A Link Between Worlds. Hyrule's principal inhabitants are pointy-eared humanoids called Hylians, which include the player character, Link, and the eponymous princess, Zelda. According to the in-game backstories, the world of Hyrule was created by the three golden goddesses, Din, Faroe, and Nehru. Before departing, the goddesses left a sacred artifact called the Triforce, which could grant the wishes of the user. It consisted of three golden triangles that each embodies one of the goddess's virtues, power, courage and wisdom. However, because the Triforce had no will of its own, because it was an item, it could not judge between good and evil, and so would grant any wish indiscriminately. Because of this, it was placed within an alternate world called the Sacred Realm or the Golden Land, until one worthy of its power could obtain it. The Sacred Realm can itself be affected by the heart of those who use the Triforce, those who are pure will make it a paradise, while those who are evil will transform it into a dark realm. In Skyward Sword, the Triforce was sought by a demon king named Demise, and after a long battle, Demise was sealed away within the temple of the goddess Hylia, guardian of the Triforce. Hylia, placing the Hylians on a floating island in the sky to protect them, orchestrated a means to stop the demon from escaping, creating the goddess sword for her chosen hero, and discarding her divinity to be reborn among the people of Skyloft. In time, Zelda and Link enacted the goddess plan and Demise was destroyed. However, Demise vowed that his rage would be reborn and forever plague those descended from Link and Zelda. That prophecy came to fruition in Ocarina of Time, when Ganondorf's attempt to get the Triforce scattered it with him gaining the Triforce of Power. The Triforce of Wisdom ended up with the Hylian princesses descended from Zelda each named after her, while the Triforce of Courage is passed to a youth named Link across generations, while the Triforces of Power and Wisdom have been part of the series since the original The Legend of Zelda. It was only in Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link that the Triforce of Courage was first introduced, being obtained by Link at the end of his quest. The Triforce, or even a piece of it, is not always distributed as a whole, such as in The Wind Waker. Link must find all the pieces of the Triforce of Courage before he can return to Hyrule. Even in the original The Legend of Zelda, Zelda breaks her Triforce of Wisdom into eight pieces for Link to find, before she was captured by Ganon. The fictional universe established by the Zelda games sets the stage for each adventure. Some games take place in different lands, with their own backstories. Termina and Laurel serve as parallel worlds to Hyrule. Hytopia is a connected kingdom, and Koolint is an island far away from Hyrule that appears to be part of a dream. Fictional Chronology the chronology of the Legend of Zelda series was subject of much debate among fans until an official timeline was released on December 21, 2011, within the collector's book Hyrule Historia, which was originally exclusive to Japan and was later released in the United States. Prior to its release, producers confirmed the existence of a confidential document, which connected all the games certain materials, and developer statements once partially established an official timeline of the released installments. 
Zelda II, The Adventure of Link is a direct sequel to the original The Legend of Zelda, and takes place several years later. The third game, A Link to the Past, is a prequel to the first two titles, and is directly followed by Link's Awakening. Ocarina of Time is a prequel that takes the story many centuries back, according to character designer Satoru Takazawa, it was meant to implicitly tell the imprisoning war from the manual of A Link to the Past, with Majora's Mask directly following its ending. Skyward Sword is then a prequel to Ocarina of Time, greater than Twilight Princess is set more than 100 years after Ocarina of Time. The Wind Waker is parallel and takes place in the other timeline branch, more than a century after the adult era of Ocarina of Time. Phantom Hourglass is a continuation of the story from The Wind Waker, and is followed by Spirit Tracks, which is set about 100 years later on a supercontinent far away from the setting of The Wind Waker. At the time of its release, Four Swords for the Game Boy Advance was considered the oldest tale in the series chronology, with Four Swords adventures set some time after its events. The Minish Cap precedes the two games, telling of the origins of villain Varti and the creation of the Four Sword. A Link Between Worlds takes place six generations after Link to the Past. Important events that occur in the game include the Triforce being reunited and Ganon being resurrected. Nintendo's 2011 timeline announcement subsequently posits that following Ocarina of Time, the timeline splits into three alternate routes. In one, Link fails to defeat Ganon, leading into A Link to the Past, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, Link's Awakening, The Legend of Zelda and The Adventure of Link. In the second and third, Link is successful, leading to a timeline split between his childhood and adulthood. His childhood continues with Majora's Mask followed by Twilight Princess and Four Swords Adventures. The timeline from his adult life continues into Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. In the early 2000s, Nintendo of America released a timeline on the official website of the series, which interpreted all stories up to the Oracle games as the adventures of a single protagonist named Link. At one point, translator Dan Ozen and his co-workers at Nintendo of America had conceived another complete timeline and intended to make it available online. However, the Japanese series developers rejected the idea, so the timeline would be kept open to the imagination of the players. Breath of the Wild's placement is currently unknown as it contains references to games in all three of the timelines. The only thing known about it is that it takes place thousands of years after Ocarina of Time. Link The central protagonist of the Legend of Zelda series. Link is the name of various young men who characteristically wear a green tunic and a pointed cap and is the bearer of the Triforce of Courage. In most games, the player can give Link a different name before the start of the adventure, and he will be referred by that given name throughout by the non-player characters. The various Links each have a special title, such as, Hero of Time, Hero of the Winds, or, Hero Chosen by the Gods. Link is left-handed, with two exceptions. In the Wii version of Twilight Princess, Link is right-handed due to the mirroring used to accommodate the right-handed control scheme, which flips the entire game world's layout from that of its GameCube counterpart. Link is right-handed in the title Skyward Sword. For the same reason, in the manual for the original game, he is depicted as being right-handed. And in the game itself, Link is seen as ambidextrous, because whether he is facing left or right, his sword is in the down screen side. Like many silent protagonists in video games, 
Link does not speak, only producing grunts, yells, or similar sounds. Despite the player not seeing the dialogue, it is referenced secondhand by in-game characters, showing that he is not, in fact, mute. Link is shown as a silent protagonist so that the audience is able to have their own thoughts as to how the Link would answer the characters instead of him having scripted responses. Princess Zelda Princess Zelda is the Princess of Hyrule and the Guardian of the Triforce of Wisdom. Her name is present in many of her female ancestors and descendants. While most titles require Link to save Zelda from Ganon, she sometimes plays a supporting role in battle, using magical powers and weapons such as light arrows to aid Link. With the exception of the CDI games, she was not playable in the main series until Spirit Tracks, where she becomes a spirit and can possess a Phantom Knight that can be controlled by the player. Zelda appears under various other aliases and alter egos, including Shake and Tetra. In Skyward Sword, it is revealed that the Zelda of that game is a reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, whose power flows through the royal bloodline. Shigeru Miyamoto used the name Zelda from American novelist Zelda Fitzgerald. Ganon Ganon, also known as Ganondorf in his humanoid form, is the main antagonist and the final boss in the majority of the Legend of Zelda games. In the series, Ganondorf is the leader of a race of desert brigands called the Gerudo, which consists entirely of female warriors save for one man born every 100 years. He is significantly taller than other human NPCs, but his looks vary between games, often taking the form of a monstrous anthropomorphic boar. His specific motives vary from game to game, but most often his plans include him kidnapping Princess Zelda and planning to achieve domination of Hyrule and presumably the world beyond it. To this end, he seeks the Triforce, a powerful magical relic. He often possesses a portion of the Triforce called the Triforce of Power, which gives him great strength. However, it is often not enough to accomplish his ends, leading him to hunt the remaining Triforce pieces. Unlike Link, Zelda, and most other recurring characters, he is actually the same person in every game, with the exception of Four Swords Adventures where he is a reincarnation of the original. In each game the battles with him are different, and he fights using different styles. The game Skyward Sword indicates that Ganon is a reincarnation of an evil deity known as Demise. 1980s In 1986, it was later converted into a cartridge game for the American NES. The Legend of Zelda, the first game of the series, was first released in Japan on February 21, 1986, on the Famicom Disk System. A cartridge version, using battery-backed memory, was released in the United States on August 22, 1987, and Europe on November 27, 1987. The game features a second quest, accessible either upon completing the game, or by registering one's name as Zelda when starting a new quest. The second quest features different dungeons and item placement, and more difficult enemies. The second game, Zelda II, The Adventure of Link, was released for the Famicom Disk System in Japan on January 14, 1987, and for the Nintendo Entertainment System in Europe in November 1988 and North America in December 1988. The game exchanged the top-down perspective for side-scrolling and introduced RPG elements not used previously or thereafter in the series. The Legend of Zelda and Zelda II were released in gold-colored cartridges instead of the console's regular gray cartridges. 
Both were re-released in the final years of the Nintendo Entertainment System with grey cartridges. 1990s Four years later, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past returned to the top-down view and added the concept of an alternate dimension, the Dark World. The game was released for the Super NES on November 21, 1991. It was later re-released for the Game Boy Advance on March 14, 2003, in North America, on a cartridge with four swords. The first multiplayer Zelda, and then through Nintendo's Virtual Console service on January 22, 2007. In addition, both this game and an exclusive, loosely-based sequel called BS Zelda no Densetsu Inishi no Sekibun were released on the Satellite View in Japan on March 2, 1997, and March 30, 1997, respectively. In 1994, near the end of the Famicom's lifespan, the original Famicom game was re-released in cartridge format, a modified version. BS Zelda no Densetsu was released for the Super Famicom satellite-based expansion, Satellite View, on August 6, 1995, in Japan. A second Satellite View title, BS Zelda no Densetsu MAP2 was released for the Satellite View on December 30, 1995. Both titles featured rearranged dungeons an altered overworld, and new voice-acted plot lines. The next game, Link's Awakening, is the first Zelda for Nintendo's Game Boy handheld, and the first set outside Hyrule Land. To exclude Princess Zelda, it was released in 1993, and re-released, in full color, as a launch title for the Game Boy Color in 1998 as Link's Awakening DX. This re-release features additions such as an extra color-based dungeon and a Photoshop that allows interaction with the older young boy holds a sword in a dungeon lit by a candle after a five-year hiatus. The series made the transition to 3D with Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64, which was released in November 1998. This game, initially known as Zelda 64, retains the core gameplay of the previous 2D games, and was very successful commercially and critically. It is considered by many critics and gamers to be the best video game of all time, and ranks highly on IGN and EGM's greatest games of all time lists, as well as scoring perfect scores in several video game publications. In February 2006, it was ranked by Nintendo Power as the best game released for a Nintendo console. The game was originally developed for the poorly selling, Japanese-only Nintendo 64DD, but was ported to cartridge format when the 64DD hardware was delayed. A new gameplay mechanic, lock-on targeting, is used in the game, which focuses the camera on a nearby target and alters the player's actions relative to that target. Such mechanics allow precise sword fighting in a 3D space. The game heavily uses context-sensitive button play, which enabled the player to control various actions with Link using only one button on the Nintendo 64's gamepad. Each action was handled slightly differently, but all used the A button to perform. For instance, standing next to a block and pressing A made Link grab it. But moving forwards into a block and pressing A allowed Link to climb the block. The B button was used only as an attack button. The game featured the first appearance of Link's horse, upon a, allowing Link to travel quickly across land and fire arrows from horseback. Those who pre-ordered the game received a gold-colored cartridge in a limited edition box, with a golden plastic card affixed, reading, Collector's Edition. In some stores that had this, Collector's Edition, quickly sold out, a small and rare Zelda pin was given instead. It is the sword and shield emblem, 
with Zelda written on it. Very few of them are known to remain. Ocarina of Time was re-released on the GameCube in 2002, when it was offered as a pre-order incentive for The Wind Waker in the US, Canada and Japan. Europe continued to receive it free in every copy of The Wind Waker, except for the discounted player's choice version. It includes what is widely believed to be the remnants of a cancelled 64D D expansion for Ocarina of Time known as Ura Zelda in early development. Named Ocarina of Time Master Quest, the game was given the addition of revamped, more difficult dungeon layouts. Ocarina of Time was included as part of Collector's Edition for the GameCube in 2003. It is now available through the Wii's Virtual Console service. In 2011, Nintendo released a new version of the game in stereoscopic 3D for the Nintendo 3DS titled The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. In July 2015, Nintendo re-released it for the Wii Virtual Console. 2000s Ocarina of Time's follow-up, Majora's Mask, was released in April 2000. It uses the same 3D game engine as the previous game, and added a time-based concept, in which Link, the protagonist, relives the events of three days as many times as needed to complete the game's objectives. It was originally called Zelda Gaiden, a Japanese title that translates as Zelda Side Story. Gameplay changed significantly, in addition to the time limit, Link can use masks to transform into creatures with unique abilities. While Majora's Mask retains the graphical style of Ocarina of Time, it is also a departure. Particularly in its atmosphere, it features motion blur, unlike its predecessor. The game is darker, dealing with death and tragedy in a manner not previously seen in the series and has a sense of impending doom, as a large moon slowly descends upon the land of Termina to destroy all life. All copies of Majora's Mask are gold cartridges. A limited, collector's edition, lenticular cartridge label was offered as the pre-order incentive. Copies of the game that are not collector's editions feature a normal sticker cartridge label. Majora's Mask is included in the Collector's Edition, and is available on the Virtual Console, as well as a 3D port for the portable 3DS console. The next two games, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, were released simultaneously for the Game Boy Color, and interact using passwords or a game link cable. After one game has been completed, the player is given a password that allows the other game to be played as a sequel. They were developed by Flagship in conjunction with Nintendo, with supervision from Miyamoto. After the team experimented with porting the original The Legend of Zelda to the Game Boy Color, they decided to make an original trilogy to be called the Triforce series. When the password system linking the three games proved too troublesome, the concept was reduced to two games at Miyamoto's suggestion. These two games became Oracle of Ages, which is more puzzle-based, and Oracle of Seasons, which is more action-oriented. When Nintendo revealed the GameCube on August 24, 2000, the day before Nintendo's Space World 2000 exposition, a software demonstration showed a realistically styled real-time duel between Ganondorf and Link. Fans and the media speculated that the battle might be from a Zelda game in development. At Space World 2001, Nintendo showed a cel-shaded Zelda title, later released as The Wind Waker in December 2002. Due to poor reception, Nothing further was shown until a playable demonstration was ready. Miyamoto felt the Wind Waker would extend Zelda's reach to all ages. The gameplay centers on controlling wind with a baton called the Wind Waker and sailing a small boat around an island-filled ocean. 
retaining similar gameplay mechanics as the previous 3D games in the series. Following the release of The Wind Waker came The Legend of Zelda, Collector's Edition which included the original The Legend of Zelda, Zelda II, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and a demo of The Wind Waker. GameSpot noted that Majora's Mask suffered from a frame rate which appeared choppier and inconsistencies in the audio. This compilation was never sold commercially, and originally could only be obtained by purchasing a GameCube bundled with the disc by registering a GameCube and two games at Nintendo.com, or by subscribing or renewing a subscription to Nintendo Power or Club Nintendo in Sweden. In the UK, 1,000 copies were made available through the Club Nintendo Stars catalog program. After these were quickly claimed, Nintendo gave a copy to customers who mailed in proof of purchases from select GameCube games. The next game released in the series was Four Swords Adventures for the GameCube, which was released in early 2004 in Japan and America, and January 2005 in Europe. Based on the handheld Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures was another deviation from previous Zelda gameplay, focusing on level-based and multiplayer gameplay. The game contains 24 levels and a map screen, there is no connecting overworld. For multiplayer features, each player must use a Game Boy Advance system linked to the GameCube via a Nintendo GameCube Game Boy Advance link cable. The game features a single-player campaign, in which using a Game Boy Advance is optional. Four Swords Adventures includes two gameplay modes, Hyrulean Adventure, with a plot and gameplay similar to other Zelda games, and Shadow Battle, in which multiple links, played by multiple players, battle each other. The Japanese and Korean versions include an exclusive third segment, Navi Trackers, which contains spoken dialogue for most of the characters. Unlike other games in the Legend of Zelda series, in November 2004 in Japan and Europe, and January 2005 in America, Nintendo released the Minish Cap for the Ultiman is on a horse. In the foreground, an imp rides a wolf. In November 2006, Twilight Princess was released as the first Zelda game on the Wii, and later, in December 2006, as the last official Nintendo game for the GameCube, the console for which it was originally developed. The Wii version features a reversed world, where everything that is in the West on the GameCube is in the East on the Wii, and vice versa. The display is mirrored in order to make Link right-handed. To make use of the Wii Remote feel more natural, the game chronicles the struggle of an older Link to clear the troubles of the interacting Twilight Realm, a mysterious force that appears around Hyrule. When he enters this realm, he is transformed into a wolf and loses the ability to use his sword, shield or other items but gains other abilities such as sharpened senses from his new form. Twilight Princess includes an incarnation of Link's horse, upon her, for fast transportation, and features mounted battle scenarios including boss battles that were not seen in previous titles. Twilight Princess diverted from the cell shading of Wind Waker and went for graphics featuring more detailed textures, giving the game a darker atmosphere, thus making it feel more adult than previous games. At the 2006 Game Developers Conference, a trailer for Phantom Hourglass for the Nintendo DS was shown. It revealed traditional top-down Zelda gameplay optimized for the DS features with a cel-shaded 3D graphical style similar to The Wind Waker. At E3 2006, Nintendo confirmed the game's status as a direct sequel to The Wind Waker, and released an extensive playable demo, including a multiplayer mode, with Capture the Flag elements, 
Phantom Hourglass was released on June 23, 2007, in Japan. October 1, 2007, in North America and October 19, 2007, in Europe. The Next Legend of Zelda for the DS, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks was released December 7, 2009, in North America, and December 11, 2009, in the UK. In this game, the Spirit Tracks Railroads which chain an ancient evil are disappearing from Hyrule. Zelda and Link go to the Spirit Tower to find out why. But villains steal Zelda's body for the resurrection of the Demon King. Rendered disembodied, Zelda is left a spirit and only Link can see her. Together they go on a quest to restore the Spirit Tracks, defeat the Demon King, and return Zelda to her body. Using a modified engine of that used in Phantom Hourglass. The notably new feature in this game is that the Phantom Guardians seen in Phantom Hourglass are, through a series of events, periodically controllable. It was the first time in the series that both Link and Zelda worked together on the quest. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.